you're looking for an inexpensive solar panel solution and willing to deal with some slight idiosyncrasies, mainly just not being normal, check these out. These are tubular solar panels, and yes, I can stick my hand through here. They were made to be a self-ballasting system. They could bolt to each other. They had little feet that went under them and they could be put up on the roof of say a Sam's Club, like what Battery Hookup has for sale right now, and generate power. I mean, that's the whole point, right? They're like 95 volts open circuit, which is really high for a solar panel typically. These, you know, 144 half cells are like 49 volts for a panel. They're also a little bit, you know, not very dense. So this panel, there's four of them here, it's 157 watts a piece. Whereas these, which are about the same size, are about 400 watts a piece. These are brand new old stock, um, you know, still packed on the original manufacturer's pallets. And they have some pretty slick, uh, array configurations that you can do. So each panel actually has four connections on them. This is the negative, and if you think about each solar tube as being a whole panel that's 96 volts each, this is the negative side of all of those tubes. This is the positive side of all of those tubes. So negative side, we got here connected back to my inverter. Um, right here we can connect negative to negative. So now it's one big panel, right? all the way up to there and we could do that up to eight times no big deal um, you've got your positive connection there to go from the positive rail to the positive rail here and then of course what you have is this connector here which takes the negative of one to the positive of the next so that puts these two columns into series and that gets us up into the 180 volt range or so so there's our main positive here's our main negative now these connectors are of a Tyco brand and they are not MC4 connectors, even though they kind of look like them. So what I did is where I want to run back to my inverter, I just snipped the end and put an MC4 connector on there. If you buy some panels from me, I'm perfectly willing to do that for you so that you don't have to grab crimpers, but easy enough to use. That connector there is also a series connection, just like this. It's really redundant because you already have this connecting the two in series, but the manual states that, you know, you can just go ahead and connect it. It's redundancy, no big deal. Each of these panels is like two and a half amps a piece, and you can do up to 23 amps for parallel without having to do any fuses, which means you can have eight of these coming down. So one, two, three, four, up to eight. So you get up to about 23 amps worth of panel. And then, then it's just dependent upon what your charge controller can take. So if you have like a grid tie inverter that can take the 600 volts input or off grid, you know, the, the, some of those take the high voltage inputs as well. You can then do eight in series. So one column here, and then the next column gets to like to 180 and then the next column is to like 270 or so so you can do eight total to get up to like 550 volts or so so an eight by eight is 16 panels oddly enough that's exactly how many are in a pallet and that's probably exactly how they designed it to be laid out on a roof and you then have two and a half kilowatts worth of panels these are tubular which means you don't necessarily have to have them tilted up at the sun you can just have them laying on the ground i envision something like a white rock or a white tarp or something under here to increase the amount of bounce back light to uh, increase the power out of these obviously grass growing through them isn't ideal um, they're self-ballasting and they don't catch wind like a normal panel does they're 68 pounds a piece compared to maybe about 60 pounds or 58 pounds for those panels um, but with them having all of the slats for holes, the wind doesn't catch them near as much. So they were in fact designed to not be bolted to a roof. Now there's design considerations. You can look at the manual for that. Um, but then every single panel, such as that little screw hole there, was connected to the next panel in order to create one large array. So pretty slick. And of course, really the reason that I'm doing this is, well, partly they're cool, right? And I wanted to get a hold of these just because they're cool and I'm gonna do some experimentation with them, but I bought a truckload of these. So if you're here in the North Texas area, I'm down in Mansfield, Texas. I'd say down in Mansfield, Texas, but that's pretty far north compared to Texas. Unless you're Oklahoma, then it's down to Mansfield, Texas. I digress. Um, I've got these panels. If, if you just want onesie twosie, 30 bucks a pop, if you want a whole pallet of them, pallet of 16 for 400 bucks. That's like $25 a piece. That's like 16 cents a watt for solar, which is insanely cheap. I mean, I, I sold cheap panels, which were the 230 watt, um, you know, standard type panel for 60 bucks a piece. And that was like, what, 26 cents a watt. So these things, really affordable. I wanna make a fence out of them. I think that would be really cool. Actually, I think what I wanna do though, 
to is like hang them on this wall here. That would be a west facing array. Help me out when that sun's starting to set. That'd be really cool too. It's a lot of cool things we could do with these. If you buy enough off of me, I could get myself another truckload um, and we could have some more to play with. Right now I have 448 of these panels. So if you want some, hit me up. I'll put my number down in the description. Just send me a text, call me, whatever.